What is up guys? It's Morgan. Today we are back in Rugby 20. Today's going to be uh, a bit of a tips and tricks video. Uh, I did do a, a big pack opening a couple weeks back uh, where I spent over a million <laughs> SP points. Uh, which should take a good while to get together. Uh, a couple of people were sort of mentioned about that they wanted to know how many, how I got so many points together so quickly. Uh, so I thought today I'd run through sort of some of my tips and tricks for the game and how I try and earn the most SP points. Uh, so first off, one of the big things we need is going into the collections. We are going to need a whole bunch, a whole bunch of these uh, epic challenges. I've only got 27,000, so we'll pick up one. Uh, but I've already got everything we need. So the epic challenge is give you certain percentages on SP points earned in a game. So we'll open it up, we'll see if we can get the uh, the one we're after. There are some good ones, I'll do a big list. The one we want is the one in the top right there, that take your time. The aim for today is to have all three be the same challenge. So in order to do this we want to have a team that you know will definitely be able to beat another team and that you can get the most points within the game from. So, we're going to go over to the options. Uh, we're going to switch the game up to 80 minutes. Uh, it's up to you what sort of time of day you want to do. And let's do it for day, just... I don't know if it affects handling or, uh, or anything with the ball if it's on. Um, leave it on pro. Uh, most points get picked up on pro, I think, from the games. Especially, this also works with um, your XP you'll learn during the game. So the higher the difficulty of pro, the higher you'll earn for that as well. The 80 minutes makes it just so you have so long to do it. And again, for XP terms, it doesn't. But we're not caring about that. We are on to the SP point. So we've got the 80 and the pro difficulty. Uh, I don't know if it affects any of these being on or off. I just have it on. just to, It won't really matter once you're in game. And then we'll go over the quick match. Right, once we're in uh, the quick match here, you want to basically pick your team. It doesn't really matter in this game, which I think is a shame about what team you are beating what other team so basically you just want to pick the best team you can do to play by the worst team you can do uh, so for argument's sake let's be New Zealand top team versus uh, in the D2 there's a couple of um, a couple of lower level teams so they've got 61s there 62 has a 61 there you go um, we're going to go down to the challenges and we want to make sure that all three of them are the take your time challenge uh, you can only use one card per once. You have to have three individual ones of those cards in order to have all three slots filled. So how this is going to work, guys, so we'll add them into all three. I need to find one more that I should have somewhere. There it is, guys. So we'll add that into the three. So all three of our challenges now are going to give us plus 60% on the SP and the XP that we gain in this game. So we've got all three cars doing the same thing. So whatever we earn in this game, we're going to get an extra 180% of whatever we've earned. So, you know, it's near enough 200%. Uh, I can't think of it actually takes the, the number you've earned, uh, multiplies that by sort of two to get 200%, and then you get that added on, or if it is in conjoints with that. But basically, so whatever SP point you earn, instead you'll earn three is what, how I think it works. So that gives you the most the most points for it. It's an 80 minute match, so we have the full length of time to do it. So we'll get into the match and I'll talk further about it. Uh, last thing you want to just make sure of is set plays. So set plays are one of the big things in this game of how we're going to earn these SP points. I've gone through most, if not all, of the set plays to work out which ones are earning the most coins for executing them correctly, how many can sort of spam out quickly, how many even give you SP points through glitches. So the main one we want to be using is the wide out. So we've got it up the top there, and that is pretty much the only one I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys, this is very boring. <laughs> it's just a very good way of doing it. It's 80 minutes of your life. Uh, if I were you, I would find something else to do in the background, find a podcast, Pick a YouTube video, maybe a series done by Mad Productions if you want. Or uh, just ring your mum and tell her you love her. We're in a lockdown at the minute. If you've got an hour to kill uh, on the phone, you can play this on silence. You're going to be doing very similar moves over and over again. I want to make it clear, guys, this is not about scoring points. I have had scores like this, which uh, warranted far less points from a game than scores where you even win like 7-0. This is all about the set plays and earning coins that way. So we'll get into the match and I'll take it a little bit further on for you. Let's see you in the match. Right guys, here we are actually in the game. 
Uh, we're going to start off with a very short kick. So a lot of this tactic is about just ball retention and doing the same set plays over and over again to try and earn coins. Commentary I'm doing now is actually after the game. Uh, this isn't live. I didn't think anyone fancied watching about two hours worth of, of gameplay of the game, just going through doing the set things. It is not fun to play, really, and it's certainly a lot less fun to watch. Believe me, I'm editing the video right now, uh, and I've chopped up about... A hundred minutes worth of footage down into a sort of 20 minute video just to try and make it a little bit more succinct and a little bit more enjoyable to watch. So if you guys are watching now, basically the entire tactic is get tackled and we're going to be using the set plays to try and earn as many points as we can. For those of you who don't really use the set plays in this game, you'll see as you select each set play it slows down time a little bit so the game will be longer than 80 minutes. When you select the, the set play, you have the little yellow map on the floor showing you where the players are going to stand and stuff. And if you look in the top right of the screen as the ball is being passed between players or successfully working, you actually gain SP points for collecting or for catching the ball and doing the, uh, the set plays correct. So the one I found works best is this wide out set play. Um, I will use some of the other set plays later in the game just to show the sort of points difference you get from using them. I've tested most of them. There's about 21 I think overall and the one I found works best is definitely the wide out set play. It's the easiest one to do. It very rarely fails uh, and even when it does fail sometimes we get some, you still get the points on occasion for them even not working so it's quite a nice little glitch that's sort of in there um, you can get some big scores so if you're sort of watching we're getting about 300 per correct one working I'll cut to a couple of other ones now where you can see some of the sort of higher ranking points so in this one here what do we get from this one so we set up the players in the wide out there's 20 there was another 300 we got 140 for bashing through someone there's another one we're right on our try line here um, so we got 300 for selecting it this time uh, the ball goes out a bit wide we've got another 300 and then 200 for breaking through so there's 800 sp points just from from one move um, i'll let a couple more highlights go sort of showing what you can do the only problem with this tactic is you do get pushed back quite a lot. You very rarely break through the lines. So when you get the opportunity, you definitely want to try and make uh, some long runs just to try and get back up the field so you can keep as much time on these um, set plays as you can. As you can see, you do earn some good points just sort of breaking through. Right, guys, what I'll show off here is sort of a demonstration of pretty much the perfect one as it works. So as you can see here, we just set up the set play. We got 300 points for just actually selecting the set play. It appears in the top right there. I'll highlight that for you guys. So after this is now done, all the players will run into position. Some are highlighted white, some are highlighted yellow to go to their correct places. We pass once, gets it to the fly half. We got 25 extra SP points just for completing that pass, which never really fails. The next pass goes out to the winger. We get an extra 300 points for that. We're then going to push forward on the analog stick to get the handoff. And for correcting a good handoff, we got an extra 200 points for that. So we actually got a huge amount of points. We'll do a little breakdown here. So 300 for the setting up, 25 for the pass, which can max out about 50 for that completed pass. 300 for the wing catching it, and then 200 for having the handoff work, which is at 825 in total. The actual cards that we've put on give us an extra 180%, so that's an extra 1,485 points. Add on that original 825, and that's 2,310 SP points from one move. So you can imagine if you're playing an 80-minute game, over the course of that period of time, you will perform that move a couple hundred times. And this is the main bulk of how we want to try and generate these points. Now, getting those perfect ones can be quite hard because not every time does the game glitch and give you the duplicate 300 points i'll add in a couple of videos here about some other points that we get uh, so we'll keep the game going guys just so you can see that i was sort of doing this throughout the whole game um we did actually pick up i think it was this one yes we picked up an injury here to our fly half just in case people are interested in how do injuries get affected in this game so a lot of the time your fly half is the one in position with the original catch and pass so injuries don't really matter. You see, I've got a couple of uh, options here where the injured player is actually involved and we still got the same amount of points. Same goes sometimes for this glitch you will experience where even though everyone is in position, you press pass here, the ball just for some reason gets thrown to the ground. But on quite a few occasions, even when the ball doesn't get caught, we still get that 300 points as you can see in the top right. Uh, here again was our injured player getting that 300 points. So players being injured doesn't really matter. 
Um, it, it, it still gets you the main amount of points, even though you've got injured players. So there's no need to make desperate subs. It's mainly about keeping players on the field. Again, we're now at half time. So the good thing about this is the ball never really goes dead. So theoretically, once you're at the half time 40 minute mark, as long as you're holding on to the ball, you can do this really for as long as you want to. I think I did about an extra five minutes of gameplay here after the half time had actually arrived. So you can keep doing this for as long as you can do. The only option is if they get, you know, an interception or they kick the ball. I think this first actually half actually ended here. They tackled and got a knock on. So that was the end of the first half. But as you can see, nil-nil at the end of the first half. It's not about getting those points. It's not about getting those tries. It's all about just doing those set plays. So here we are going into half time. So on the half-time marker, I decided just to take off the injured player just because we've got other players. You'll also see in the stamina bars on all the players, because of doing these set play moves constantly, every time you complete a set move, the, uh, the stamina bar actually goes back up, so we don't really run out of stamina. Just to show you guys some more highlights of different uh, set moves we were doing. So here's the set first set move. You'll see if you're counting the points in the top right. We actually got 305 for completing that one. But there's a couple more obstacles and movements and we get tackled. This was the pod of three now, which is the other one that was set up, which is the easiest one to do. However, from the player catching and going to ground, we only got 100 from that one. Uh, this was the Rangi. This was the, the switch to 13, which is it, it can mess up quite a lot, this one. This one's probably one of the hardest ones. It doesn't really line up very well with where the players are meant to be. We got 100 SP points for doing that, and then we got a couple more just for breaking the lines. And then finally, we swap back to the wide out, which is the nice one, two pass. And we got 320 for that. Uh, we didn't manage to get the handoff, but we got another 70 for breaking through the lines. So it still works. A little later on in the game, we uh, got this big dump tackle and <laughs> someone got injured. Um, or he didn't actually get an injury, but they picked up a yellow card. As you can see here in the stamina fitness of both teams, their players are dying. Our players are pretty much all green. So you can make some subs if you want just to replace them. So they've had a yellow card, so helps us a little bit now with their players getting injured and having less players with breaking through the lines. So you earn the, the, the same sort of 300 for um, the, the set move being completed. But you also get a lot more just from breaking lines. The handoff is a great one just for getting that extra bonus points as you're going to be running at them anyway. And then if you manage to break the lines, holding down the sprint button and running is definitely a way to get some good extra points in. We all know this guys is now in the 80th minute. Uh, we did get to 14-7 at the end of this game. I scored a couple tries just by being knocked over the try line by accident. And they actually scored a try <laughs> outrageously by um, their player picked up a, a missed ball and just ran the length of the field. Nothing we could do to stop it. That's just how it went. But that was the final try, guys. So as you can see, a lot of our players are all green. It was 19-7. Um, I can't remember if I got this kick or not. I think I got this kick at the end. But as you can see, we've got all of the take your time uh, cards were all completed so we've, we're going to get that full bonus for playing the full game we thought we might as well have this conversion you get 20 SP points for just having that completed conversion so we might as well knock it over there we go it takes us through again the 80th minute you could play forever if you wanted to I decided to sort of end it there with the courtesy of the AI knocking us over so there we go guys so it's a 21-7 in the end was the final score of the actual game we got 221,000 SP points just from the game, which with the cards helped us get to 630,000-ish SP points. So it's a big chunk of points just from one game. It, it's taken about 100 minutes worth of gameplay to get us to this stage. Um, but is it worth it or not? We'll let you guys decide. Drop in the comments if you thought this video was helpful. Definitely give the video a like if you uh, think you'll give this one a go yourself. It is a long process, but it's certainly quite useful for rather than grinding individual games out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. It does help out the channel a lot if you're enjoying these Rugby 20 videos. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.